Okay, okay. I think we got this. It sounds good to me. All right, let's get it. Um, we are doing playoffs. Playoffs? I don't know about playoffs. Yeah, we got our play-in games here. And as you can see, we started off with um, an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we got two play-in games. We got Tom and MJC, and then we got Graham and Dodge. Uh, and then winner of that gets into the the big bracket for round one um so yeah mjc and tom played each other i believe the uh, last week of the season and they decided that they were just going to bring the four mons that they didn't bring on their teams to uh the playoffs so yeah that's kind of what we're working with here uh some interesting sets so we'll just hop into it we'll without further ado so we got the Magnazone named Darude, foreshadowing, and then uh, Terror Captain Rotom, the Will-O-Wisp, don't know if, I mean, Willow's not bad in WJC's team, but you know one quarter of his team can't even get status and the other one doesn't even care about it. Um, I mean, looking at these four, you really just need an electric move and then a coverage move to be able to hit Doug and Mag. Um, yeah, having Terra Blast would have been pretty nice. But yeah, Terra Electric doing a shitload to uh, say big. And big Dark Pulse predicting the switch out. Good call. Tom making some plays. And then Mirror Coat. Bang Skeet, Rotom eliminated. Now MJC's game looks a lot easier. Uh, potentially would have considered keeping Magnazone around for Slowking. Um, but, you know, Garganackle is just like really, really solid. Draining Kiss getting a decent amount of health back. But between Avalanche and Salt Cure, I'm going to keep getting worn down. Um, yeah, I mean, I would figure a Garganackle should be able to 1v1 a Mistrevious. Pain Split does get a ton of health back. And also doesn't boost up the Avalanche, too. But this is not really a, uh, a winning scenario for Tom at this, at this point. Yep, okay, it goes into Slowking. Correct call there. Damn, only does 41 with Surf. Oh. And then Garg goes boom. Um, yeah, Garg... Garg probably could have just soloed for the rest of the game, but I respect the explosion. And then Honeclaw's Doug Trio being able to get more accurate stone edges. Goes for it again. Bring it down to Sash. For the full power reversal. Love it. <laughs> and then reversal is 57 to Slow King. That's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, this was a historic match. Shout out Cordell in the chat. Um, yeah, we see a Giga Impact to end it. I loved it. I love the creativity. Uh, honestly, not like terribly played either. Now we got Dodge and Graham in the other play in game. We see the Frost Last Lead uh, classic. Start layering up some spikes. Yup, yup, yup. Golden Go gets both screens up and goes into Tauros. As Dodge gets all three layers up. Um, potentially misclicking the Will-O-Wisp into Tauros or predicting a Terra, possibly. And then gets the D-Bond off and kills Tauros. Hell yeah. That was pretty gross. Tauros was really good for Ursa Luna, too. Um... Cleaver comes in, defogs away. Uh, the spikes get into Slowbro. As Trick Room gets set up and gets a free U-turn into Ursa Luna, which goes for the SD. <laughs> yep. And through Reflect, nothing is living that. Um, so yeah, at this point, it's just figure out a way to maintain. Um, so yeah, get some chip on Ursa Luna with Slowbro there. It's still not lost for Graham at this point. Um, yeah, Hydreigon get the 
kill with a uh, Draco here. Group Snow comes in. If I was Graham, I would have went for the sub there. So Hydreigon is running Scope Lens with Focus Energy, Sub, Draco Meter, and Flash Cannon. If he goes for the sub there and then gets a Focus Energy up the next turn, he can get a crit um, Flash Cannon into Grimmsnarl, which goes through screens, of course, and stat drops. Uh, but Graham decides, you know what? I want to get my own screams up. And then it was hardened to Dra Hydreigon on the Dragon Dance. Dodge getting pretty greedy here. Both of them getting greedy. Yeah, Dodge going for the third Dragon Dance in a row. Super greedy. <laughs> uh, Mew living the crit Draco is pretty wild. Um, this still isn't even like terrible uh, for Graham. So he can live that, go for the flash cannon. There's another 70%. And now with Trick Room up, go Cleaver. This should be, I believe, a Fury Cutter. Oh, you went for the Agility. Yeah, so I think that was a little unnecessary. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he needed it in case he was Scarfall Canyon. Yeah, okay. I see it. Um, I think the thing you really needed to do... You needed to get... Because I'm pretty sure this is Defog Agility, Sword Stance, Fury Cutter. I'm pretty sure that it was only one. So you really have to stack the Fury Cutters. Um, yeah, get one up there. and But you're at minus one attack, so... Even with that boost, you're gonna need like the Omega crit of a lifetime to actually uh, get the kill. Um, damn, Volcania is so good. Holy moly. Volcania, the beast. But yeah, Dodge getting the Trick Room up and going into Ursaluna basically sealed it because Graham's like defensive backbone of this six was screens and Slowbro, and he basically had to use Slowbro as damage control against Ursaluna. Um, so yeah, that just really good game plan on Dodge's end using Trick Room. Uh, got extremely greedy going for all three Dragon Dances with Iron Thorns. Uh, but that may have also been like a lack of knowledge of what Focus Energy uh, does and goes through screens and all that business. Um, yeah, no, that was just really well played. I can't believe how bulky uh, Grimmsnarl and Mew were to be able to live those crits. But uh, yeah, GG. So we got our first round of playoffs. We got me and Dodge. Uh, what was my game plan? Oh yeah, my game plan was uh, forget to prep for Frostlass and then pray that Oracorio or Haxorus can kind of bust some holes into Dodge. So let's see how that went. Um, I lead Orthworm and I, I did that because I was expecting him to have maybe go like Rotom Wash or uh, maybe Frostlass, because those are probably... It's, it even worked into Fortress as well. Honestly, it was pretty fine into everything other than Vivalon, uh, because it was pretty much just a free Shed Tail uh, for me. And so I could go into Oracorio at that point, and I can bluff that I have nothing to do against this Mew other than QD, but he's already calm minded up. So I can tear a dark on a potential ice beam, hardly take any uh, damage from it. I can do it again. Oh, actually, just went for the damage. All right, but uh, I only have Revelation Dance, and that was kind of a countermeasure for Ditto, which we see Ditto, or Iron Thorn, Iron Thorns, and Ursaluna a whole didn't come this week. Uh, but yet, I went Terra Dark or Corio because Ditto copying it stays Ghost and Flying. And if Revelation Dance is my only move, then he could only hit me with a Ghost-type move. And as Terra Dark, obviously, I'd be able to win that 1v1 and keep Quiver Dancing up, and I wouldn't care that he copied all my boosts. Um, yeah, so that was idea. The only issue was that, of course, is that Grimmsnarl can do a lot of damage to me. Uh, I could have just stayed in there. Uh, he went for the T-Wave. I believe he was actually still running Prankster, Grimmsnarl. And had I just stayed in there, I would be immune to the Prankster T-Wave because I was a dark type at that point. Um, but that's all right. I got my rocks up now. Um, I don't really have a great switch into Rotom. I didn't want anything to get burned, really. And it it didn't 
I needed, oh yeah, my Hatterene, Jesus Christ. I had a good switch and it was Hatterene, except I made Hatterene the most stupid set of my life. It, it, it's alright. It, we'll get over it. <laughs> it had three specific uses. One of them was to go into Vivalon and bounce back Sleep Powders or Stun Spores or Confuse Rays in this instance. Um, but yeah, I figured he wasn't going to do any sort of business into me again, so I could just go into Bandit Haxorus and uh, get the first impression off preventing screens, which was really nice. Um, so he spins my rocks away. At this point, I'm pretty okay just to let this do whatever it wants to me. Um, but I can bounce back rocks, of course. I'm worried he's going to spin. Um, so I didn't want my red card to go up yet. I wanted to keep that for the Quiver Dance Viv or Calm Mind Mew. Uh, but yeah, he Volt Switches back into Mew, and I get the full kill with First Impression, which was really nice. Um, and now, I'm really not too concerned about Setup Mons other than Viv, so I can go into that and eat the Hurricane with Hatterene and red card it out. Just once again, I didn't have a Sleep Powder switch in other than this. Uh, this was full spadef, 252 HP, 252 Calm Nature Hatterene. I had a 30% chance, no. I sent the message somewhere. It was like a, it was six or twelve percent chance to die to that shadow ball from timid specs. So I was definitely kind of in the money on that and was able to get some good chip on Frostlass, which would put it in range of like Palafin later on. Um, but yeah, that was specs for sure. So I can go into hard body here with no problem. I am a little worried about a T wave. Not worried anymore. But since I saw it. I decide, okay, I can just keep QDing. Uh, I'll take the 75% chance to get parried, but I'll still try to be faster, right? That was kind of the concept. I get up to three times on everything, plus four all around. Pick up the kill on Viv. Frostlass comes in. And it was still faster than me, which I was actually super surprised by. Needed another QD. But that's alright. Frostlass is going to die to rocks at this point. Um, so, okay. He spins it. Gets rid of him. Palafin's kind of chilling. I think Palafin takes it from here, really. I'm just getting some chip on some stuff in the meantime. I don't really care if he hazards up. Or stacks hazards on me. Um, I go for two smackdowns. Predicting the Rotom. And then I go for EQ. He went for the Volt Switch, because Bingo walked on him. And then he goes Rotom, and I go for the EQ. I saw it coming. Couldn't do anything about it. Whatever. Uh, but yep, keep Lando around as a sack, or for a Fortress. Don't really care. Anything can get burnt on my team at this point. It's not the biggest deal. But I'm just getting chip. I am a little... Like, wondering what his Rotom's item is. Yeah, maybe the Citrus Berry or something. Uh, but yeah, Banded Earthquake here is going to be able to take out Fortress. I could also use Banded First Impression. So I just save that, Sack Lando, and... I think, like, my best play here is to indeed go Haxorus for the First Impression. I don't, I, maybe, there might not be a way for me to lose it. When I, I thought about this turn for like a couple seconds, because it definitely felt weird going Palafin just to jet punch the Rotom. Um, yeah, as you can see, I, I mean, missing the Willow definitely blows, but I think jet punch is picking up a 12% frost last at that point anyway. Um, yeah, maybe T-Wave was the play. But then I, I think it's still the same situation with uh, Bandit Hacks or his first impressions. Uh, but yeah, great game to dodge. Definitely got a little cheesy. I know he didn't have all the moves that he wanted to on Grimmsnarl, which definitely sucks. Uh, but yeah, uh, on to the semifinals. And this is another round one game. We got Berg and Ty. Um, I, <laughs> I was talking to Ty throughout the week and... Uh, belly drum Zangoose just it looks so funny um because it was like Oko-ing everything obviously plus six with like that silk surf uh but 
but it was just doing ridiculous damage to everything. And Berg's team is very balanced, like almost like semi stall. Uh, like plus six Sangoose with Thunder Punch was okay. And Corviknight, you know, Facade or uh, Body Slam was killing Garchomp. You know, it was just picking up everything. Uh, and Berg definitely had no answer to it necessarily. Um, I, I mean, like a little bit with Mimikyu if he keeps his disguise up. That was kind of like the only thing. Uh, so we see Screens, Uxy. Get the T Wave off. I think Berg got, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, so he got paired that one time. I think he was like pretty clear. But this is pretty big for Ty breaking that disguise. Like, yeah, Scissor, it's eh, kind of useful for priority, but. I mean, really, you just wanted it for Mimikyu anyway at this point, uh, given the six Berg has. So breaking the disguise for Zangoose is really good. Uh, Berg was running Rocky Helmet Mimikyu to break like a Sash on Bundle or like Meowskarada. Uh Obviously, Meowskarada didn't come, so um, sacrificing disguise for Burn in his mind uh, was pretty good at that point. Yeah. Rough skin, rocky helmet, scissor taking a shitload of damage. And that was jetpack scissor, so really cool tech going into booster bundle on the Garchomp, force the chancy in, and then go for thief and take it to violate. Oh it's so good. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I definitely felt like Berg was on the back foot here. Um throughout the, the early game. I guess Chansey really isn't a terrible knockoff switch in now that it doesn't have a Violate and doesn't care. But yeah, Foul Play still killing Scissor through, uh, even with it being burned at 43. Good 11% down to uh, Uxy. Sinks the T-Wave Para back onto it, which blocks the Yawn, which is really funny. Um... Umbreon is actually in the perfect position of all mons to get mementoed. I think that was a little early for Ty. Like, either you do it in that super early game, or you try to figure out a way to do it in front of something other than Uxie, uh, just, or uh, other than Umbreon, because you, you see the foul play, right? So you have like a 75% or 25% chance to get that off. And of course, foul play crits, that was going to do like 600%. Um... I kind of get it though, you you sack him on with a memento, you feel like you gotta catch up because you haven't killed anything yet. But like taking a violate from Chansey, yeah, breaking disguise, you're not in a terrible position. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, why is he going for swagger? Like his idea was, okay, maybe it has like mirror arm on Corviknight or something, and then you'll send that plus two back to yourself. I was like, why would Berg ever switch into Thunderous with Corviknight? And then, boom, Mirror Herb, Thunderous. So solid. It's a good chunk, because I think this Fizz Death Umbreon, that easily to it KO'd. Um, now Corv comes in, this should be like sending some red flags up to uh, Ty, something's wrong. Corv wasn't like really specially defensive, it had a little bit in there, but it was definitely EV to live that. Um, and yeah, it's the, uh, it's the Larbinger Arms set. So, weakness policy with a speed boosting item and then power trip. Or, uh, a speed boost boosting move and power trip. And yeah, uh, Corv's able to just kind of do the damage here. It's not actually able to kill Bundle. Only did 69%, nice. Uh, but yeah, Bird kind of had, had his pick at it at this point. I think... I don't know, maybe if it wasn't like Memento Oxy and had a little bit of offensive pressure, like that lead Mimikyu wouldn't have been as bad, where it would have been like, break the disguise early, now Zangoose is more wide open to do its thing. Uh, plus like, obviously Memento getting rid of one of your Mons uh, puts a lot more stress on the rest of the team. I think once he got rid of the Violate on Chansey, he probably should have done a little bit more with Bundle. But... I think Berg played the pivots correctly, where it, it wasn't super easy, obviously, to get around. Um, but yeah, no, GG's. Uh, so I will be playing Berg in the semifinals.
you don't want to, but here we are. All right, we got Cordell and Joe. Oh, this this game was wild. Um, Juice World the Gengar. That's so fucked up. <laughs> it's so fucked up. <laughs> uh, tricking a scarf and taking the violates actually really, really good um, on Joe's side. It's, uh, you know, it it limits how many switch ins uh, Prime Ape will have. Um, now Joe's kind of jockeying for position here, makes a really good double on the scream tail, and is able to go for the knockoff, get rid of lefties. So now any damage left on Ting Lu is permanent. Regard, or I mean, a wish from Scream Scream Tail will uh, bring it back up, but it needs that support. So Moonblast we see does about 31 from an Amorous into Scream Tail. What I do. I think Joe's making the right plays. Yeah, Iron Treads is super free into that. It can't really touch you. It'd be a free spin. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so tough, right? You don't want to go Pult and get a Toxic Spike on it. You also don't want to risk it knock off. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a way that Cordell would have been able to keep up hazards a little bit more. I, I mean, it's probably getting into Samurott earlier in the game uh, before the T-Spike goes up. But, you know, that, that's a tough thing to prep for, too. Uh, now, if he's Terra Poison Primeape, he can come in and absorb it. An option. Um, we see Contrary once again off of the Damaris with the superpower. Beautiful. And it's mixed. We got Moonblast and Superpower. Alright, so Pole comes in anyway to kill Enamorous with T-Bolt. And I believe this is Scarf Roaring Moon. Should be at least. Um, so yeah, just Sack Screamtail. Go into your Dark type. As Joe sacks Juice World to the Ceaseless Edge. Gets a big cursed body there. I don't think it matters too much because I doubt Cordell's going for another Ceaseless Edge into a Cook Wavel anyway. Uh, but yeah, um, Kevin Gates starts stepping it up. Big stepper. Uh, actually, really important live right there by Dragapult. Yeah, this going for the sub sucked and should have went for the damage, but he didn't give it Moxie. I don't know what the calc is. I'm assuming this is a decently bulky quack and it probably lived the T-Bolt. Um, but yeah, you're... Uh, mm, go for that T-Bolt. That means then Rage Fist kills it and you're a little bit better of a spot. Still have these three versus Dragalgi, Roaring Moon, and Iron Treads. Hmm, Roaring Moon is probably still fine though. I, yeah, I think I think Roaring Moon had it regardless of that T-Bolt. Unless it killed, of course. Uh, Sacred Sword, yep. Yeah. It's like, I'm Scarf, I don't care. And can go for Crunch freely. Lumberry Cinderace, love to see it. Lives the crit. That's wild. And now it's a speed tie. Um... Is there a way Cinderace brings us back? You're at 57. He takes Stealth Rocks and Spikes. I don't know what Cinderace could do to kill Dragalgi from like 70%. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah, so if he wins that speed tie, does he win the game? Probably not. Unless Dragalgi has nothing to hit a like 4% Cinderace. Dragalgi probably ends up finishing it up anyway. That's what I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I think Joe made a beautiful team for this. I think he got a little bit lucky in terms of what Cordell was clicking with, like, the Pult on the Quack, because that just made it super easy where, you know, he could just go into this. Uh, you know, if Primeape's still alive and maybe it's outside of Crunch range, you got to go for something else. I would assume Scarf Roaring Moon had a dragon type move and could have went for that. So I guess it wouldn't have mattered too much. 
yeah, no, GG's all around. Um, and we'll go on to the next one. MJC and E. Got to watch this one while I was in the airport. Oh, this game was really good. All right, so we see the lead Dougie trapping in whatever. And Gren goes for U-turn and doesn't bring it down to Sash. So he does 4%. Or 3% with reversal. Then gets a massive crit with a uh, stone edge. Does 88% before going down. Uh, yeah, super huge. Dragonite is no longer a defensive switch in. Um, little aggressive SD out of Halucha with the Skeledurge coming in. Got very lucky that Dirge was not running Will O Wisp. Um, yeah, I mean, the sub sucks and everything. But yeah, uh, no Willow uh, definitely saved MJC's game. So Megazone able to red card the sub on Skeledurge, get it out there. Um, oh, we got to go back to the last turn. Okay, so Magnazone goes down. He goes into Halucha on Gren, assuming this was like a choice locked Gren uh, based off that. And then makes a double to Chiampal on the Dirge, which gives him a free crunch. So yeah, really good play. MGC is trying to claw his way back up a little bit. Goes Gardevoir, gets the regen trace. I didn't even notice that. That's actually so good. That was something really frustrating playing against uh, Gardevoir last season with like my regen core. Um, all right, Sacks Dragonite, goes Dirge. Lucha comes in again. Whew. Okay. It resets. Uh, unaware, also really good because you're able to uh, ignore Torch Song boosting. So, uh, right here, I if I'm E, I'm expecting this to be Specs, and I'm expecting that next Shadow Ball to do a shitload of my Dirge. Gambit seems really free. If I'm MJC, I'm expecting E to know exactly that and then to go into Chien Pao, Azelf, or Lucha, right? Like, it, any three of these are probably beaten um, Gambit one-on-one -on -one with fighting coverage. So, that's what happens, is MJC has a really good Shadow Ball opportunity, and E, I think, makes the read. Maybe he didn't realize it was a threat, and maybe he was thinking it was Scarfed Gardevoir, and he was going to be fine. Um, but no, I, I agreed with the play from MJC's end. All right, so now we got Lucha rocking its Unburden and now is able to get some damage off with Acrobatics, kill off the Skeledurge. And then E makes a little bit of a blunder here, goes into Scarf Gren and is still slower than Unburden Halucha. And somehow, at minus one defense and plus three Supreme Overlord, Gambit does not kill. It only does 47 with Sucker Punch. So MJC just went from down, uh, what was he down? Like five to four, five to three. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, he was down five to three and just brought it back to three to two in three turns. Got very aggressive there going for the SD. Um, I think I think he could have just went for the acro and got your damage. And then, I mean, at this point, Gardevoir should win. Um, should be fine just to go for uh, Spec Psychic. Yeah, okay. And now, say Tusk was fast and was able to kill Gardevoir. If it's fast, it's probably not going to be able to live a, an ice move from um, Jam Pal anyway. So yeah, MGC played that amazingly. Was there a way for E to get around? Oh yeah, it would have been go Toxapex earlier for sure. But that's the thing, man. When you, when you have a setup mon on the other side of the field, you start getting tilted. Like everybody goes through it. Everybody gets tilted and like it's really hard to continue to stay on the same mind path of... All right, what actually do I need to switch in for this, right? If your answer the whole game was Skeledurge, but you still have a Toxapex sitting right there, you just go into that, right? But in the moment, that's not clear. You know, you're you're all over the place. Um, 
But yeah, we are looking good. Let's see. Let me pull up the playoff page. Do do do. Replays playoffs. Ha ha. All right. Here we are. We got our semifinals. We got Joe and MJC, myself and Berg. Uh, so yeah, I will catch you guys in the Discord and see you with the video of the semifinals, the finals, and the All Star game all wrapped up together in one. Peace.